Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a horror, thriller, action film from 2000 titled Final Destination. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Alex's parents help him pack up the night before the big senior trip to Paris. That night, a mysterious wind blows inside his room and as he's falling asleep, he thinks he can hear a woman calling out his name. The next morning, Alex's parents drop him off at the airport with the other seniors. Before the flight takes off, his friend, Todd, convinces him to go to the bathroom with him so they won't have to go while they are in the air. In the bathroom, the speakers overhead play a song that Alex recognizes as written by a man who died in a plane crash. The seniors board the flight and take their seats. Alex takes his seat in the back row but soon two of his classmates come up to him and ask if they can switch seats so they can sit together. Alex agrees and goes to sit by Todd. Looking around, Alex notices that several things on the plane are broken. The plane takes off, and soon begins to shake. The passengers are nervous, but the plane evens out for a few moments. The plane begins shaking harder and the lights flicker, luggage falls from the overhead shelves and rolls around the plane. Oxygen masks are deployed in front of the passengers. One side of the plane breaks off, and a row of seats is sucked out. There's an explosion in the front, and the flames engulf everyone still buckled into their seats. Alex snaps out of it, realizing he was just having a vision, as two of his classmates are asking him if he wants to switch seats so they can sit together. Alex obliges and goes to sit with Todd, but starts freaking out when he notices his desk in front of him is broken just like in the vision. Alex alerts everyone on the plane that there will be a crash and gets into a fight with one of his classmates, Carter, who is upset that Alex is delaying the flight. Alex is escorted off the plane along with Carter, followed by Carter's girlfriend Terry, their friend Billy, and Todd and a girl named Clear who is afraid to stay on the plane. Two of the teachers are also escorted off and one decides to stay behind with the students until they can catch the next flight while the other accompanies the rest of the seniors to Paris. Alex and Carter continue to fight in the lobby, everyone is upset that they'll have to wait to catch the next flight. While Alex is being restrained, they see the plane take off and explode from the airport window, everyone watches it with horror. Everyone that was taken off of the plane is taken to a room inside airport security to wait for their parents to pick them up. They are all also questioned by FBI agents who are suspicious that Alex is responsible for the explosion on the plane. Alex tries to explain that he had a vision of the plane exploding but they don't believe him. Everyone's parents arrive at the airport to pick them up, except Clear, so Alex's parents give her a ride home. Back at home, parents fall asleep on the couch while Alex stays up watching news coverage about the plane crash. He goes to the window to watch the storm outside and lightning strikes directly in front of his house. 39 days later, the high school holds a memorial for the students and teachers who died in the crash. Everyone is given a rose to put on the statue they have erected in memory of the students. Alex notices that the FBI agents are in attendance, standing in the back and watching him. Billy comes up to Alex and jokingly questions about his future, thinking that Alex might be able to predict it since he predicted the plane crash. Alex is offended and tells him to go away. Carter tries to start another fight with Alex, but Terry pulls him away and apologizes. Alex and Todd both go up to the memorial to lay down their roses at the same time and Todd says that his parents don't want him to hang out with Alex anymore because they are scared of him. Todd's brother was on the plane when it crashed. Alex says he understands, but they make plans to go on a road trip after everything has settled down. That night, Todd gets ready for bed in his bathroom. Even though his windows are closed, a mysterious wind blows through the room. The wind shuts the bathroom door as Todd sits down on the toilet and it begins leaking. Todd goes to the mirror and attempts to shave his face but immediately cuts himself. He gives up on that and begins trimming his nose hairs instead. The toilet continues leaking and the water travels across the floor. When Todd plugs in his radio, it plays the same song that was playing in the airport bathroom. At home, Alex tries to relax by looking through a magazine, but can't stop thinking about Clear. An owl shows up outside his bedroom window and he throws the magazine at it. Instead, the magazine hits the fan and shreds of paper explode around the room. One shred lands on Alex's thigh that has Todd's name on it. Todd takes down the drying laundry from a wire over his bathtub, but slips on the water leaking from the toilet and the wire gets wrapped around his neck. He gets dragged into the bathtub where his feet slip on spilled shampoo bottles and he is unable to get a footing to keep the wire from pulling at his neck. Eventually Todd is strangled to death and his body lies in the bathtub. Alex has a bad feeling about Todd so he rushes over to his house, only to find that police and paramedics are already there. Clear is also there, hiding behind a tree and tells him to leave before Todd's parents or the FBI agents see him. Todd's father confronts Alex, saying that Todd killed himself because he felt guilty that his brother died on the plane instead of him. He tells Alex to leave, 
and Todd's body is carted away. The next day Alex walks to Clear's house where she is working on her metal sculptures. He asks her what she was doing at Todd's house and she tells him that when Alex had his vision on the plane, she felt what he felt, and when Alex had a bad feeling about Todd, she felt it too. They decide to go break into the morgue to visit Todd's body to get a better understanding of what happened. They find the room where his body is being kept and it flinches. They freak out, and a man steps out of the shadows and explains that dead bodies sometimes do this because not all of their nerves have died yet. The man knows who Alex is from news coverage and explains that Todd's death couldn't have been a suicide because there are marks on his hands and neck from where he tried to pull himself free of the metal wire. The man suggests that maybe they were all meant to die in the plane crash and because Alex intervened, death is coming up with a new plan to kill them all to make up for it. The man suggests that the only way they can fight back is if Alex can have more premonitions about what might happen so he can intervene again. Alex and Clear sit outside a coffee shop discussing death's plan and what that might mean for them. He is convinced, but Clear seems more skeptical and suggests that maybe Todd did kill himself. Carter and Terry drive by, and once Carter sees that Alex is there, he turns his car around, almost hitting Billy who is riding his bike, and goes to confront him. Their teacher also walks out of the coffee shop and they are all gathered together in the same place. Carter tries to pick a fight with Alex again and Terry gets annoyed. She insists that if he's going to try to start a fight with Alex every time he sees him, that she's just going to leave. As she turns around and walks out into the street, she is hit by a bus and killed right in front of everyone. Back at home, Alex watches more news reports of the plane crash and is able to correlate the seats everyone was sitting in when the plane exploded in his vision to the order in which the survivors are dying. Todd died first in his vision, then Terry, which is the order they are dying in now. By his memory, he figures that their teacher is next. She is at home packing up her things and talking on the phone, explaining to a friend that she's going to move away because she can't handle living in the same place where the tragedy happened. When she looks out the window, she sees Alex walking around in her yard and she hangs up on her friend and immediately calls the FBI agents to report that he is there. Alex checks his teacher's tires in the driveway when the FBI agents show up and put him in the car. They take him back to their station and question him and he tries to explain that he's figured out death's design and is convinced that their teacher is going to be next to die and that he was at her house to try and prevent anything from happening to her. The FBI agents tell Alex that they no longer suspect him of interfering with the plane to cause the explosion, but they are suspicious about his involvement with the deaths of his friends after the crash. They don't have any evidence to hold him on, so they have to let him go, but they make it clear that they're watching him. The teacher continues packing and puts on a record, playing the same song that was playing in the airport bathroom and over the radio when Todd was getting ready for bed in his bathroom. She puts a kettle of water on the stove, but the wind quickly blows out the flame. She strikes a match to relight it. Once her water comes to a boil, the teacher pours it into a mug with her high school's logo on it. This freaks her out and she tosses the water onto the floor, opting to go to the freezer and pour liquor inside instead. The temperature change causes the mug to crack, and as she walks around the house she leaves a trail of alcohol on the floor. She continues packing and sets the mug on top of her computer. The alcohol leaks into the top and causes wires inside to short circuit. The computer explodes, and a shard of metal is lodged into her neck. She pulls it from her throat and tries to make her way to the kitchen. The flames from the computer explosion catch onto the trail of alcohol on the floor and lead back into the kitchen after her. The alcohol leads the flame back to the oven and the explosion knocks the teacher onto the floor. She reaches for a rag on the counter to stop the bleeding, but instead knocks over her knife rack and a knife plunges directly into her chest. Alex sees the flames inside and breaks into the teacher's house in an attempt to save her. He finds her on the floor with the knife in her chest and another explosion causes the oven door to open and plunge the knife deeper, killing her. Alex takes the blade from her chest and then drops it on the floor when he sees that his left shoe prints in her blood in the kitchen. He runs from the house and sees his friend Billy riding by on his bike. After Billy greets him, the house goes up in flames and they are both knocked onto the ground. FBI agents arrive at Clear's house and question her about Alex, telling her to contact them if Alex tries to get in touch with her. Clear arranges for her, Carter, and Billy to meet at the high school memorial to talk about Alex and their situation. Clear says the only way they're going to figure out what's going on is if they find Alex, so they start driving around to look for him. They pull off on his street and Clear gets out to start looking in the woods. She finds him and he is very upset. She tries to comfort him by telling him stories about her dad when he was alive, but that he got shot in a gas station and her mother remarried to someone who didn't want kids so they abandoned her. She tells him that if he needs a place to hide, he can stay in her dad's old cabin. 
Carter and Billy pick them up to take him to the cabin and Alex tells them what he's figured out about the order of the deaths. Carter wants to know who's supposed to be next but Alex refuses to tell him. Carter reasons that if they're all going to die anyway, it doesn't matter how recklessly he drives. He drives like a maniac through town and eventually comes to stop directly on train tracks. The rest tell him to stop messing around when they see that a train is headed their way but he refuses to get out of the car. The rest get out and Alex tries to pull him from the car when Carter realizes the door won't open and he isn't able to undo his seatbelt. He can't get the car to start to drive away, so Alex pulls him out of the window just in time. They all stand beside the tracks as the train crushes Carter's car and the debris from the collision flies into the air and cuts off Billy's head. Alex says that Carter should have been next to die, but since he intervened, death skipped Carter and moved on to Billy. Since Billy is dead, that means Alex is next, and then Clear is supposed to die after that. Alex holds himself up in the cabin, working on safe-proofing everything. He makes sure everything is secure and nothing sharp is sticking out anywhere. Wind blows inside the cabin and knocks some things over and Alex is almost stabbed through the door by fish hooks, but he sees it coming and intervenes. Clear returns home and tells the agents waiting outside of her house where Alex is for his own protection. They immediately start to head towards the cabin. Alex reads through a newspaper about the plane crash and as he does, he realizes he got the order of the deaths wrong, and that Clear is supposed to die before him. At Clear's house, a power line goes down and starts throwing sparks at her dog tied up outside. The agents pull up outside the cabin as Alex runs from it, determined to get to Clear before anything bad can happen to her. He takes a boat across the lake and runs through the woods towards Clear's house and almost dies several times. The agents chase after him in the woods, lighting strikes a tree nearby and it falls on top of him pushing his face into a puddle of water. Clear goes outside to untie her dog so that it can get away from the power line, and as she does, her pool rips and covers her feet in water while electricity flies through the air. She tries to climb up the side of her house and manages to break into her bedroom window. The power line connects with the house and sets it on fire and Clear goes to the garage to try and leave in the car. She backs the car out through the garage door and debris from the house crashes in through the windshield. The power line connects to the car and kills the battery and she is trapped inside. Alex is able to get himself out from under the tree and runs to Clear's house to find her stuck in the car with standing water and electricity going everywhere. He tells her to stay in the car because the tires are keeping her grounded and she won't get shocked as long as she's in there. Alex goes around to the front of the car and says that he's going to kill himself so that he messes up death's order and the intervention will skip her so she can go free. He grabs a hold of the power lines and is shocked back into the garage. The agents pull up and rescue Clear from the car and go to check on Alex. Six months later, Clear, Alex, and Carter all take a plane to Paris to celebrate beating Death's design. Alex isn't able to stop thinking about it and obsesses over the fact that he is still technically next, since no one actually intervened in his death. Outside, one of the local guitarists starts playing the song that originally played in the airport bathroom and Alex starts to freak out. Alex runs off to try to save Clear from being collateral damage and Carter goes after him to try and calm him down. Alex is nearly hit by a bus when he runs out onto the street and the bus swerves out of the way, crashing into a building, causing a sign to fall and crush Carter. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.